my friend. Stand up and be counted, or just make something happen. There are times when you just have to stand up and do something. How do you know when to stop what you're doing, stand up and take a stand on something? In your business, in your city, in your industry. You know in your gut, just listen to it. You're supposed to be everything you're capable of. You can't be lazy or selfish. Get in there, stand up and be counted. Go over, under, around, just make something happen for the betterment of all. We used to call it the common good. I still believe in it deeply. When I think of this stand up for your hometown thing, those are my mom's words. She said things like that. You gotta stand up for your town. For us, this town is like a member of our family. And you know, you, you don't always love everything your family does, but you'll do any damn thing for them. So you stand up for your town. You do what you can do. She would be so proud of the people in this room. And don't you ever tell her or me that you people haven't been there for our town. You did it. You stood up for our town. Thank you. Feed the Frontline NOLA co-founder Devin DeWolf coordinated getting food from struggling local restaurants to frontline responders. DeWolf worked with other local entities to provide food, love, and employment to our culture bearers. Feed the Frontline and Feed the Second Line have raised over a million dollars. And when we were trying to figure out what to do, we just got second in line behind Devin because he had it all figured out. Isaac and Amanda Toops served free meals to their employees and then began feeding unemployed service industry workers and anyone else in need. The Toops were providing up to 500 meals per day. Isaac and Amanda Toops served free meals feeding anyone in need. And they're in my neighborhood, the best neighborhood in the city. Founders of Blue Oak Barbecue, Phil Mosley and Ronnie Evans led a community feeding effort with fellow Hogs for the Cause teams. The teams prepared weekly bag and beer lunches in a drive through style pop-up lasting several months, again, at Carrollton and Domain in the best neighborhood in town. My Aunt Dottie says, I can't listen as fast as you can talk. I'm like, well, too bad. Yeah. We, don't, we don't want to bore people. Charles Armstrong, owner of Pee Wee's Crab Cakes on the Go, began making free grab-and-go plates for children, knowing many relied on school-based meal programs. Al Copeland Jr. and the Al Copeland Foundation Be a Hero, Thank a Hero campaign raised over $100,000 for supplies and meals for frontline workers. In response to hurricanes that hit the Gulf Coast in 2020, the Al Copeland Foundation launched Heroes Unite for the Gulf Coast and Heroes Unites for 337 by partnering with suppliers, businesses, and restaurants to deliver hot meals, essential items, and supplies to those in need. I think the pandemic taught us all who we are, but in this town, we are new. Um, a lot of people say the reason that New Orleans is the way it is and that we party so much is because it's kind of hard to live here. <laughs> a lot of tough things happen, you know? I mean, my God, pestilence and... Anyway, it's hard to live here. And I don't want to make light of this last year because it was tough, and we learned a lot about ourselves. but we kind of already knew a lot of that. And the people you're gonna hear tonight, they just said, what the hell can I do? And they did it. They just took an action, just like mom said. Just what can you do? Do it. Marv, Richie, and Zaid Amari, brothers and owners of Creole Cuisine Restaurant Concepts, initially donated over 35,000 hot meals. Then, through Creole Cuisine Cares, raised enough funds to provide 25,000 additional meals. By partnering with other entities, they provided 3,000 meals to the food insecure. They created the Keep the Beat campaign, which enabled them to donate funds to those affected in the local music and cultural community. Zach Streif and Port Orleans Brewing Company launched POB United, an organization that raised over $375,000 to buy food from distributors and pay local restaurant operators to prepare it for layoff service industry workers. For months, POB United delivered meals to urgent care facilities, police stations, hospital ER, ICU departments, and Meals on Wheels. Donald Link, Steven Strajewski, and the Link Restaurant Group provided thousands of meals to staff and those in need in the community. They became spokespersons for the restaurant industry, speaking out about its safety during the pandemic. They advocated for a return of New Orleans tourism and promoted the city as a safe destination. Ruby Slipper Restaurant Group founders Jennifer and Eric Weisup established the Lanyard Brew Emergency Relief Fund to help hospitality workers and their immediate families with emergencies beyond their control that have caused financial hardship. 100% of donations go directly to impacted hospitality workers. They have raised over $200,000 and distributed the funds in $500 direct grants. They also live right across the street from me and are lovely people. 
Melvin Rodriguez as chairman of the National Restaurant Association, and how in the world did he pick 2020 to be chair of that, has served as a voice for restaurants in Washington, D.C. As the leader of the industry's primary major national organization, he worked to get the payroll protection program, thank you, Melvin, extended for businesses and continues to fight for its survival. I've known Melvin since he was about 17, because before he ever worked at Galatoire's, he worked at Commander's Palace. You know, when you think about what we went through during this whole time, it was not just a pandemic. I mean, we went, we had come on the tails of the Me Too movement, and then we come through the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, those were both overdue, and we had to go through all that at the same time. But this industry has so much that we're all so proud of, but we have things to fix. Let's fix them. I've never seen a time where you could change laws this fast. And I know my mom would be telling me, well, go change it. Go change that law. And I think we can do it. We can change the laws about tipping, y'all. They're stupid. Let's change the damn laws. Let's change those things. Let's look at ourselves. Let's look at all the things we need to change in our businesses. Let's look at the diversity. Let's push. This was a time that you were forced to sit and reflect. And I think a lot of us did a lot of that. And I'm proud of that as much as I am of all the other responses. So let's do it. Executive Director of the Louisiana Hospitality Foundation, Jennifer Kelly Killian, oversees the many support programs that make up the foundation. The Hospitality Worker Crisis Grant Program provides emergency financial assistance to individuals working in Louisiana's hospitality industry. It has supported employees dealing with emergencies. Jennifer also directed the South Louisiana Bar Owner Relief Fund, which supported over 400 Louisiana bar owners with financial assistance amid COVID-19 closures. The LAHF also supports educational grants, the Happy Santas Program, the Hurricane Laura Relief Fund, Fund and educational grants. Lauren Darnell, executive director of the Minnow Foundation, partnered with Chef Cassidy Lewis, owner of Bumblebee's Pastry, to create Bee's Grocery Fund. The fund assists essential workers in need of immediate assistance in purchasing groceries during the pandemic. Lauren also created the Bounce Back Fund to provide immediate emergency financial aid to hospitality professionals of color to meet basic needs. Minnow has partnered with donors and foundations to provide direct funding to those in need and has provided individual support to assist hospitality professionals with identifying and applying for other forms of aid and securing unemployment. Troy Gilbert and Robert Payton co-founded Chef's Brigade, a united coalition of independent restaurants, purveyors, and chefs working together under a culinary brigade system to feed hot, healthy food to citizens, frontline responders, and healthcare workers of New Orleans. With FEMA and the city of New Orleans, they produce up to 60,000 meals a day, sometimes at Noki, utilizing independent restaurants throughout Orleans Parish to feed our food insecure and at-risk residents. Chef's Brigade has surpassed one million meals served. You know, during this pandemic, the whole world was affected differently. It seems like about half the world, I mean, this was holy hell. And there's a whole chunk of the world that did just kind of fine. We were not that half. <laughs> we were on the other half. And this was so tough. I don't like to compare crises, but most people in our industry did not have any business interruption insurance. People might not have had that nest egg. You were just destitute, business done, business over. What the heck are you gonna do? Well, the people in this room that we're talking about tonight, they did something. They did what they could do. And that's to be applauded. And I don't see that in every industry. I don't, maybe I'm not supposed to say that. But I see it in this industry and God love y'all.